pretty impressive how guitarists can hear a difference at all, standing three feet away from their cab that's pointing at their legs and just hearing the reflections and frequency cancellations bouncing off walls of their acoustically shit <laughs> rehearsal space. Well, in two and a half decades of making records, the one thing I've learned is to never, ever underestimate a guitar player's highly developed sense of hearing. <laughs> oh man, the things you have to try and say with a straight face on this show. Just to catch you guys up on what's going on, why we're here, I did a video last week where we did a little shootout of some guitars based on this quote here. If tone wood doesn't matter and pickups don't matter, then why a Les Paul sound different from a HSS strap? So I put together the ultimate tone snob signal chain. I think we had about $16,000 worth of gear, plus an absolutely incredible guitar player, Mr. Christian Bay came in as well to help out. And the response I got on this video is nothing short of spectacular. In six days, we've got 89,000 views and over 2,500 comments on this video because we did a blind test and I wanted to hear from you guys uh, what you thought, which guitar was what. All based on using your ears and not your eyes because that's what really counts. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to record guitars and get good guitar sounds because I think as guitar players and just generally overall creative people, we do tend to get caught up in things like specs and we don't worry enough about the things that actually matter and make a difference. Uh, the whole notion that one expensive guitar is going to sound a whole lot better than another is kind of not really true when you actually sit down and make recordings as we witnessed last week. We shot out four guitars. We shot out a Les Paul Custom, which was worth about $4,000. We shot out Fender American Ultra Strat with humbuckers as well as requested by the first comment there. But we also brought in a PRS, which was about what, 4,200 bucks that had EMG humbuckers on it. And then lastly, this $269 Harley Benton loaded with Tesla pickups because this couldn't possibly sound good, right? And we ran two different tones, clean and edge of breakup because I always get the comment that I use too much distortion because you know, it's not like you use distortion of metal or anything weird like that. But ultimately I want to put this debate to rest because I think we're focusing on the wrong things here. Anyway, let's read off a few comments. Then I'm going to do the reveal of what were the clean guitars. How am I supposed to hear a difference if I can't see it? Hmm, that makes things a little more difficult now, doesn't it? I guess that B is the PRS and maybe D is the LP. No idea about the Strat and the Harley Benton. Thanks for sharing, Glenn. You're a treasure. Well, thanks very much for writing in. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. And believe me, I'm trying to help people save some money here. A is the MG. It has that clear sterility. B is Benton. Has that low quality electronic sound. C is Fender tone. D is Gibson tone. I wonder if my ears lied. Boy, are you ever going to be pissed when you find out what has that low quality electronic stone, as you put it. B is the Strat. All sound amazing. I cannot believe a $269 guitar can compete with older used car priced guitars. As Obi-Wan Kenobi once famously said, your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Let's run the clean clip. <laughs> Well, that was sure interesting, wasn't it? Uh, once again, to everybody who commented on the video, thank you so much. 2,500 comments is a lot to go from. There's no way I could list them all. We'd be out here for a week or two trying to read them all out. I just tried to grab a few here and there where I could, but believe me, I really do appreciate the fact that you guys wrote. Now, I just want to make a point here that only 42% of the people who watch my show are actually subscribed. Uh, that's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it, considering I do these videos, three of them a week, and um, I'm not 
not asking for anything from you guys other than just maybe clicking the button. That would be a huge help and help me achieve my goals of doing more videos like this where I can help break down some of the mythology around recording guitar and help you get the results you're after. So if you guys could hit the subscribe button, it would be a massive help and I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyway, that was quite revealing and I'm gonna read off a few more comments here because I thought it was pretty interesting. I am gonna make a, a note here that we did do clean and edge of breakup, but we scrambled the edge of breakup tones and I don't think too many people realize that. Um, and I think this just kind of goes to show that uh, on the clean channel, yes, there are differences from guitar to guitar. I don't think anything's massively distinctive. I don't think a Les Paul and a Strat both with humbuckers are really stand out one from another. A Strat with a single coil obviously will though. However, we did get some very interesting commentary here. Check this out. How is it that the old saying goes, nothing sold less Paul's like Jimmy Page's Telecaster? Ain't that the truth. All this petite gear but hot garbage lewd mics, lol. B guitar sounds like prison ass, whatever guitar it is, here's my guesses. A, Strat. B, Harley Benton. C, Les Paul. D, PRS. As many have pointed out that D sounds the most different, however, all of them sound different, which disputes the point that Glenn is trying to make here. Also, there is definitely some EQ going on somewhere because none of these recordings sound as bright as the bridge pickup should, which makes me think Glenn mixed with the treble and high mids to hide some kind of noticeable differences between the guitars. Wow, Joe, you're completely wrong on all points. Uh, you got all the guitars wrong, and the one that you said sounded like prison ass is the $2,200 Fender American Ultra. So, hey, well done with your highly developed sense of hearing. Great job, dude. Um, also, I don't understand the problem with Lewitt mics. I think they're phenomenal. I've been working with them for years. I've got some absolutely spectacular results on them, not only on guitars, but on drums. And uh, the 1040 is definitely my all-time favorite here in the studio. I'm so impressed with it. I'm selling my 1982 U87. I'm that impressed with it. But seriously, dude, go with what works for your ears because clearly it's working out great so far. Now, as for your assertion that there's definitely some EQ going on, yeah, wrong again. All I did was put two mics up, the 440 and the 640, and blend just a little bit like I would on any client's record. There's no EQ going on, no post processing, no nothing. But clearly, I did some EQ manipulation that couldn't possibly be your prejudices based on badges and prices. No, that never happens. Okay, before we do the reveal on Edge of Breakup, I wanted to share this one with you because I thought it was pretty good as well. Strat is A, had that glass tone. Gibson is B, equals the Edge of Breakup, made it all clear. You can tell it has more highs. PRS is C, equals the sound is not as glass and kind of sharp and bright to not be the Gibson. And cheap one is D, equals Edge of Breakup, did not sound well. Okay, you know what? Great observation. Let's roll the clip! <laughs> Okay, so the only one you got right on there was the Harley Benton, so good job on that. Honestly, uh, the pickups I find on this are just a slightly less output than the rest of them, and just maybe turning your gain knob ever so slightly would probably uh, equate that a little bit better. But uh, hey, congratulations on your stellar ears. You thought that the last bullet was a strat. Great job, dude! Now, my conclusion to all of this uh, is one thing I'm going to be investigating in an upcoming video. So once again, hit that subscribe button so you guys get notified when that comes out. But one thing I'm suspecting here and why this flies against conventional wisdom so much is, you know, why do all my guitars sound close to each other when I'm recording them? And it really all comes down to one thing. This is my signature set of SIT strings. Uh, I'll have a link for these in the description below because these are made out of nickel and they don't sound overbearingly top end and they give you a nice consistent tone from guitar to guitar. Now I'm gonna be doing a video in the future where I shoot out several different string types and see just how much they affect their tone. That's my hypothesis anyway, and that's based on a review I did last year on the Maxima Gold Strings, which were just fucking terrible. I couldn't believe how bad they made the guitar sound. I mean, like I came in thinking, nah, this isn't gonna make a big deal at all. Yes, it made a big deal. So my question is, are guitar strings just going from manufacturer to manufacturer, changing the tone that much? And are we getting that confused with a pickup swap? 
I'm thinking that might be a little bit truer than we'd care to admit because chances are when we bring a guitar into a shop to get a pickup change, because I'm guessing most guitar players out there don't want to do it themselves, uh, they wind up getting new strings put on their guitar at the same time and maybe a different style or a different brand or a different chemical makeup or whatnot. And that's where they're hearing the tone change. And it's not coming from the pickup but the actual strings. Again, this is all just pure speculation at this point. I'm only guessing, but I am going to be doing a follow-up video. So once again, hit the subscribe button. Oh yeah, and I also found what might be the coolest guitar mic ever, and it's not actually designed for guitar. I'm going to have a video on that as well. So if you want to find out all about that, again, please hit the subscribe button. Anyway, I just like to thank everybody who watched the first shootout video and left a comment. I really do appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody who did hit the subscribe button. Once again, it's very much appreciated. I want to keep doing this stuff and I want to help you guys save money when it comes to making gear purchases, because this isn't about me being right. It never has been. All I'm trying to do is make sure you don't go down some of the paths I took and wind up spending a lot of money that you don't need to. Because remember guys, as long as your pickups aren't generating horrible squealing feedback when you open up your volume pot, they're the right ones for your guitar. Save your money. Is to never end effort. Ugh, it really doesn't matter. And we ran the test and we got your misconstrued pre <laughs> Okay, okay. Because remember guys, as sorry it is. <laughs> <laughs>